Wave them around a little bit and make the devil nervous. Everybody say it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of the Gospel of John, chapter 1. I'm going to preach tonight to all of you who are here, but I especially want to preach to the delegates from all these countries because I want to give every opportunity to put into you everything I believe that will help you when you go back. They've come 12,000 miles, some of them, to come over here. I believe they ought to get all the preaching we can give them, all the teaching we can give them. And so uh, I'm, I'm preaching to all of you. I preach. I preach to somebody said, Brother Osteen, you preach the same thing over and over again. I know it. You say, when are you going to stop? When you start believing it. <laughs> Peter said, I put you as long as I'm in this tabernacle, I'll stir up your remembrance. Your pure minds to remembrance. And we can hear something a thousand times, and then the next time we hear it, we get something out of it. But there are keys to success and blessing. And I want to impart to these people from all these countries here this little talk that we have tonight from the Word of God. Not a long message, but one that I believe is a key to what has blessed us here and brought us out of many a dark valley. Could I have an amen? Amen. If you're alive, say, say praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. All right, let's look at John here. In John chapter 1, in verse 19, and this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and denied not, denied not but confessed, I am not the Christ. They asked him, What then? Are, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? That prophet? He answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who are you that we may give an account to them that sent us? What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight in the way, the way of the Lord, as said in the prophet Isaiah. I want to talk to you about how important it is what you say about yourself. What do you say about yourself? If you are always putting yourself down, telling lies about yourself according to the Word of God and naming it under the realm of humility. How ignorant can you be? I don't, he doesn't like, doesn't like me to tell this story, but we used to go down into, uh, into the mission down here. Y'all have heard me tell this many times. Brother Bell and all of us used to go down there, Brother Dearman, and we'd preach in the open door mission. And so we invited a Baptist preacher to go with us because we felt like a little of the Holy Ghost might rub off on him. Everybody say, God bless the Baptist. And everybody that's a saved has the Holy Ghost. Everybody that's born again has the Holy Ghost. But I'll tell you, it's wonderful to know you can be born of the Holy Ghost, but also baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
And so he went down there with us. And uh, we prayed, you know, before uh, we had the service. And used to, we used to get on knees, and it's good to get on your knees. Sometimes I lay down flat on my stomach and pray. Sometimes, most of the time, I just sit down on the floor. And, uh, but you can walk and pray, pray anyway. No, there's no, no nothing about the posture. Uh, but anyway, uh, we used to get down low and moan and groan, you know. But now, now that we got baptized in the Holy Ghost, we stand up. And we lift our hands and we begin to praise God. And so we prayed around kind of like this. Brother Bell said, Lord, we praise you tonight. We're going to have a great service. Uh, the Holy Ghost is going to work. So forth and so on and so on. And the next one, he prayed a victory prayer like that. And the next one, he prayed a victory prayer like that. And the next one, he prayed a victory prayer like that. And he got down to this uh, precious little Baptist preacher. And he prayed, Oh, God, you know, oh, God, what a weak worm of the dust I am. You know, God, I'm a black-hearted sinner. Lord, you know I failed you so many times. Oh, God, I'm such a sinner. I thought maybe we ought to get him saved. <laughs> and, and, and you know, uh, after the service was over, we had a wonderful service in spite of his prayer. And so I got him right up against the wall. I never will forget it. And I said, I want to talk to you. And I talked to him kindly. I said, are you really in the condition you told the Lord? He said, what do you mean? I said, you told God you were a black-hearted sinner? a failure, a weak worm of the dust, a wicked sinner. He said, well, Brother Osteen, you know what I mean? I said, I guess you mean what you said unless you're lying. I said, let me ask you a question. Are you saved? Yes. I said, what does this scripture say? What, 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 does, what does this spell? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from a double L. What does that spell? He said it spells all. I didn't ask you, I asked him. I mean, y'all are always interrupting my sermon. You didn't interrupt Shamba. I said, uh, I said, what does that spell? He said it spells all. I said, what does A-double-L spell? He said, it spells all. I said to him the third time, I said, what does A-double-L spell? He said, it spells all. I said, what does A-double-L spell? And he said, it spells all. He says, that does make a difference, doesn't it? He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Oh, what a, how Jesus must hang his head in shame when the sons and daughters of the Most High God say derogatory things about the great creation of God that he has brought forth into the kingdom of God. What do you say about yourself? All you people from other nations, I hope this will stir you. I hope it will imprint you to where you will never again go back to your country and be... Uh, to think you're being humble when you're talking about being a weak, a beggarly, uh, humble, this, that, and the other, and, and just tell lies about what God has done. I want you to hold your head up high. You're royalty. You're the ambassador of the Lord God Almighty. All this trivia that just, oh, I'm just so unworthy. I'm just so unworthy. You are unworthy. You're not unworthy. You remember that story about Brother Hagin when he first saw Jesus, that first vision he had of Jesus. He said, uh, I never get tired of telling this. I tell it better than he does. <laughs> he said, when I saw the Lord, I saw him, Brother Osteen, just like I see you. He said he was as real, just as physical as, as you are. And he said, I fell down at his feet and I put my hands on his feet and laid my hand, head on, on my hands. And I said, oh, Jesus, I'm not worthy to look upon your blessed face. I'm not worthy to look at your blessed face. And he said, Jesus spoke to him in a sharp military command. Stand upon your feet. And he stood up 
And he looked right in the face of Jesus. Jesus pointed his finger at him and said, You are worthy. You are worthy. For I shed my blood and made you worthy. Come on. Amen. Now this is, this is real simple. But if you're not careful, you'll miss it. This has influenced my life as much as any scripture that I know. He said, they said, what do you say about yourself? What says thou thyself? But you know, the Holy Ghost doesn't talk old English. What do you say about yourself? And I want you to notice, he said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. That scripture is in the Old Testament, two or three places. John had read that. Jesus said, God had told him, you are that voice, the forerunner of the Son of God. You are that voice crying in the wilderness. And John said, you want to know who I am? I am what the Bible says I am. You missed a good place to shout. He would not say anything about himself beyond what the Bible said. Who are you, John? I'm the voice. Uh, there come a voice crying in the wilderness, make straight a, in, in the desert a highway for our God, so forth and so on. I'm that voice of Isaiah chapter 40. Well, John, don't you have anything else to say? Nothing else. That's what God says I, what I am, and that's what I say I am. I agree with God. Amen. You know, John could have had a bad day. He could have, talked, he could have mumbled and murmured and, and, and said a lot about his condition out there in the desert, but he didn't. He said, I just want you to know, my confession is, I am what the Bible says I am. I can do what the Bible says I can do. Thank God. Now, if you'll learn to tell people who you are according to what God says, it'll change your life. Somebody said, well, who are you? Well, you could go on, say, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm a charismatic, I'm a charismaniac. <laughs> I'm anything, you know, you can, you can talk like that. But you see, there are things in the Bible God describes to you. I remember when I first received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then uh, that blessed me. And then I got over in the epistles, and I began to read Romans and, Ephes Romans and 1 and 2 Corinthians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and I began to see all those wonderful things that God was saying. And there seemed to come out of the, the pages of Scripture a magnificent person, sparkling with the supernatural, strong as a lion, Demons tremble wherever he went. And I said, oh God, who is this that I see coming out of the pages of Scripture? And Jesus said, this is the New Testament believer. Yeah. Everybody shout, that's me. that's me. Say it again. That's me. Say it again. That's me. See, we need to say what God says about us. If God said it, Somebody said, God said it, I believe it, and that settled it. No, whether you believe it or not, God said it, it's settled. Don't downplay yourself. You are royalty. I think about these people from all over the world here tonight, and more will be coming in. I think about how God has placed you in these countries and how you ought to hold your head up high. You're, am, you're the ambassador of Almighty God, and you, you have the Holy Ghost in you and the Word of God in your mouth. You ought to speak what God says about you. 
You can do that without haughtiness and arrogance and, and pride. It's not you, it's God. What do you say about yourself? You know there is, there is power. The power, I used to quote this scripture wrong. The power of death and life are in the tongue. I told you that. He said, well, I thought that's what I said. No. The power of life and death is in the tongue. You say, well, no, that, that's what it says. How many of you think that's what it says? You're afraid to lift your hand, aren't you? <laughs> power of life and death is in, is in the tongue. That is not what it says. It says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. The emphasis is on the power of the tongue. And Jesus said, you will have whatever you say. This building is a result of words. It used to not be here. You know that. It was a lot, a lot of ground. That building over there is a product of words. We saw the promises of God. We said in our heart, we'll build, we'll pay for it in one year. We paid for that one, six million dollars without a, even taking an offering because we said it. But we agreed with God because God said do it. You see, and you can destroy yourself and your family with your words. We always build up our children. Never look at your child and say you'll never amount to anything. You'll never pass your grades. You're dumb. You're, 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 you're no good. Oh, my. You, you, you might as well be cussing. I'll tell you, those words cut deep in the heart of your children. You ought to magnify God by lifting them up and telling them they're winners. They're more than conquerors. And I, I tell you, my confession is the devil will not have one of our children, any of us. Everybody say, the devil will never have one of my children. <laughs> so I, I, I want to just give you some things. Here are, here, I like this, I have this sevenfold confession. But I want you to put your Bible down on the floor, and I want you to stand up, and we're going to make, we're going to tell God who we are. Here is what God says we are. How many of you will agree with God? Put up your hand. How many of you will dare to believe God, no matter, even if it sounds unbelievable, put up your hand. All right. We're going to make our confession. And you, you men and women from other countries, you take this back and you say it in the morning. Say it in the night. Say it when you go to bed. Say it when you get up. Say it on the mountain. Say it in the valley. Say it in the city. Say it in, in the country. Say it wherever you go. Dare to make your confession. What sayest thou of thyself? I want you to say, I am a new creature. The Bible says, if anybody be in Christ, and I am in Christ, therefore I boldly say, I am a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Clap your hands for joy. Come on, let's clap for joy. Say this, say, I am delivered, I am delivered from, the from the power of darkness, of darkness and, translated and translated into the kingdom, into the kingdom of, his of His dear Son. Hear me, devil. Hear me, devil. I am delivered not going to be, not hoping to be, I am delivered from your dark domain. You have no power over me. I have been translated out of your darkness into the light. I am delivered from the curse of the law. 
I am delivered. Not going to be. I am delivered. God said it. I agree with God. I am delivered. Go ahead and clap. I found out something else about you. A lot of things written about you in the Bible. If you're a believer, find out what the Bible says about believers. If you're in Christ, find out what the Bible says about those in Christ. All right, say this with all of your heart. I am redeemed, I am redeemed from, the the from the curse of the law. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. You, say, Who am I? you say, who am I? I am among the redeemed. I am, among the redeemed. I am redeemed. With the precious blood, the precious blood of, Christ, of Christ, who is a lamb, is a lamb without, blemish, without blemish and without spot, without spot who was barely ordained before the, the world, before the foundation of the world, but was manifest, was manifest in these last days, these last days for, me, for, me, for me, for me, for me, I am redeemed. Out from under the curse of the law, poverty, spiritual death, sickness, arthritis, heart trouble, headaches, any kind of trouble. I am redeemed. I am the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Oh, I lend and not borrow. I'm not under the curse. I am blessed. Hallelujah. This is the end of side one. Please turn your cassette over at this time. What sayest thou thyself? Say what God says. Say this. I am anointed. I am anointed. Say it again. I am anointed. Say the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Ghost abides in me. Abides in me. Permanently. Permanently. Never, to Never to depart. I am ready, I am ready. For, any for any emergency. For the greater one the greater. will rise up the anointing will come. The power of the Holy Ghost is my helper. I am anointed. I'm not alone. I have the power of God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Go ahead and rejoice. Come on, let's really rejoice. Yes, 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 yes. You know, now remain standing, it won't hurt you. I have to stand, you might as well stand. But already some of you are getting rid of headaches. Already some of you have made up your mind you're going to make it. Already, some of you already have a better image of yourself. You're not a weak worm of the dust. You're not even a worm, much less a weak worm of the dust. You're a son and daughter of the Most High God. We know who we are. And we know who is in us. And we know where we're going. Hallelujah. And when it's all over, we win. The battle is not over till we win. Amen. What sayest thou of thyself? Say this. God says it. I am more than a conqueror. Than a conqueror. Through him that loved me. Him. I'm not just a conqueror. Just a conqueror. I, am I am more than a conqueror. Hear me, devil. Hear me, devil. You, don't you don't have a chance. Principalities and powers. 
rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked spirits in high places, every demon force, you hear me? I come against you in the name of Jesus, in the power of his blood. I'm not crawling through life. I'm marching. I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. You know, you know, I've been having a, quite a battle in my own life. And uh, the re Lord revealed to me. I didn't know what even to do. The Lord revealed to me. And you can pray about this. He said, the devil has assigned one of his chief princes to destroy you. And so I've been talking to that prince. And I said, Mr. Prince, come over here. Come over here, Mr. Prince. I want you to know you don't have, I used to say a Chinaman's chance, but we have Chinese that come here. You don't have, you don't have any opportunity at all to conquer me because I don't come against you in the name of Lakewood Church, in the name of John Osteen, but I come out, out against you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And, and Mr. Prince, listen to me. I don't have to shake and tremble because I smell you out there. I don't have to be afraid because the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. And every tongue must confess that he is Lord. So bow, Prince, and confess that he's Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. Oh, the battle is not over till we win. I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Uh, now that's number now that's number six. I want you to say this. The greater one lives on the inside of me. Say it like you mean it. Say it this way. Greater is he that lives in me than he that's in the world. I have I have the greater one in me. He doesn't go out and in. He lives in me. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Glory to God. I'm not alone. The greater one is in me. Now give the Lord a hand clap. Now remain standing just a little longer. That's better than dragging along. Say, well, you know, I just don't know how I'm going to get any money. I don't know how God's ever going to supply my needs. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. Oh, the field I work in is a hard field. It's a preacher's graveyard. That's a devil's lie. The God of America is the God of South Africa. He's the God of all of Africa. He's the God of Central America. He's the God of Bulgaria. He's the God of India and Bhutan and Burma and around the world. And when you people get on that plane to go back home, the very moment you step off in your country, the devil's going to cry, oh no, they're back home again. Come on. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap. All right. Let's make it all together. What sayest thou, thou thyself? Let's say it together. Say, I am a new creature. I am delivered from the power of darkness. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am anointed of the Holy Ghost. I am more than a conqueror. The greater one lives in me. And I left out one. I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. I'm blessed. And I cannot be cursed by anybody, anywhere. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. 
Give the Lord a praise up. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now you can sit down. You can sit down. That's the first 30 minutes of my two-hour sermon. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. We got somebody running in the back. Here he comes. Red shirt and all. Glory be to God. He's got the victory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There he goes. There he goes. Hallelujah. Here comes another one. Take your liberty, take your liberty, take your liberty, take your liberty, take your liberty. Woo! Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Take your liberty. Laugh in the devil's face. Woo! Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Go ahead. Oh, glory be to God. There he goes. Hallelujah. Here comes another one. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I tell you, the Lord's here. The Lord's here. You're set free. You're set free. The truth has made you free. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Glory to God. 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 Just obey the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Go ahead. The devil's nervous. The devil's nervous. They don't talk to Bohusha Kamahandana. Yes. Yes. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to God. Takamahasha. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what is it that gave you such resurrection? It's the Word of God. Now, let me talk to preachers here from, from other countries here. I'm not, I don't know everything, but whatever I know, I want to impart to you. This is far better than getting a congregation and beating them over the head and, and, and always griping at them and complaining and tell them how bad they are and tell them all about how they ought to dress. You, listen, you better be glad you got something to put on. Some people are clothesline preachers. They got to get, they got to get all the women. They never preach about pre the men. They preach about the women. How the, uh, just tear people up. Beat them down. Tell them what they're doing wrong. Get them down low and beat them more. I wouldn't go to a church like that. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go at all. I never, never, never would go. Never, never. Never, and I hope nobody else goes. You're supposed to have good news. Tell them what the Bible says about them. And I'll tell you, you turn them loose on the world, they'll, they'll take a broomstick and chase the devil five miles down the road. Amen. 
I'll tell you they'll have so much joy all the neighborhood will want to know what they've got. I'll tell you build great churches. This church is not built great. I want to tell them not because of me, not because of my family. I'll tell you I couldn't even build that 234 seat uh, little church over there. It's because we begin to learn who we are. We begin to feed people. We begin to lift them up. Don't you feel lifted up tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. If you take this message back and preach it all over Bulgaria and India and Burma and Bhutan and wherever you're from, or I tell you and tell people what God has done for them, they didn't get religion, they got eternal life. I'll tell you, God has great, wonderful things to say about the believer. What sayest thou of thyself? Don't ever let anybody hear you say, well, I'm just about the poorest specimen of a believer you could ever find. Well, somebody ought to knock you in the head <laughs> with the Word of God and lead you to Lakewood Church. Amen. Listen. The Bible says, death and life are in the power of your tongue. You can go back to your country. You can go back to your town, wherever you are in the United States. You start using the power of the tongue based on God's Word, of course. It's not positive thinking. Based on God's Word, you can change things. Start saying to your church, we're going to grow we're going to win this whole city to the Lord. We're going to reach the world. We're going to have the wealthiest and healthiest congregation in town. And we're going to give more to missions than we've never done before. We're going to win our relatives to Jesus. Go tell them what they can do in Jesus' name. <laughs>